hear me right now, Jimmy? Oh, we're live. Oh, right we're live. Now. We're okay, live. Yeah. I can yeah, hear you. I was just waiting for the perfect time to press the button, but you guys were on your coffee rants, and your coffee rants are almost as fast as when people are on coffee. Sometimes. <clears throat> Sometimes. All right, well, we got Adrian from Wombat here. We're going to just let him let you know what the universe looks like, and then the show's going to be over. That's probably not true, but um, Adrian, welcome back. We love having you around. Cool. Uh, thanks. Yep. Thanks for having me again. Of course. Uh, what's going on? Um, too many things. I don't want to. I don't want to kind of rant about things that that are going on in the world because it's too depressing sometimes, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. If we want to start with like, well, you know, war, potential war three, pandemic, still probably. Yeah, all that stuff sucks. Yeah. So um, let's. Sometimes you are able, or you might be able to put that aside and just focus on other things, which is sometimes also very helpful, right? Um, even if it's also sometimes hard <laughs> to focus on other things. Anyway, right. um, we have plenty of stuff going on, actually. We just concluded um, Dungeon Master Season 1 yesterday. Um, we're, I think we're currently paying out. I'm not sure whether it's right now or it's kind of, kind of about to start. Um, and so we're looking to start Season 2 next week, Wednesday. Um, Right, that's that's very exciting. <clears throat> um, I think that people were having uh, a, a lot of fun in season one, and um, looking at the comments we just spoke about, kind of um, how cool it is if people actually get back to you and tell you that what you what you've been doing is actually a great thing, right? And we were, we've been getting a lot of these comments, so that's actually pretty awesome, and that's um, that's yeah, obviously that's more important than any um, any extra dollar that you could get. Right. Um, right. So um, happy to happy to be, be able to make people happy. Um, so that's one thing. Um, we also we will have a, an NFT drop on Monday uh, for, prior to season two. Um, there's going to be new packs with new items, uh, partially new items and a few surprises. So um, uh, looking forward to that as well. This time we will we, we do a community drop so that community folks will have a chance of grabbing their stuff. Last time we sold out in two seconds, <laughs> so um, our community I, had, I was having a hard time yeah. getting stuff. Um, so we have two drops. We have a public one and a community uh, community one on Monday after like afternoon European time. So it's going to be morning in the US, um, right? Um, and yeah, we're looking to or we're working we're working on on a lot of wombat stuff. So we're looking to integrate. New blockchains um, were pretty much there. We're almost ready to launch support for Binance chain. Oh, what are, what do you want to call it? BNB chain, BSC, uh, whatever. It's BNB chain right, right now, right? Um, yeah. BNB chain, Avalanche, um, these kinds of uh, phantom and uh, will be ecosystem, ecosystem chain. So that's that's probably hopefully launching this and or next week. Um, across all platforms, um, look very much looking forward to that, and finally being able to ditch MetaMask for myself. <laughs> um, uh, that's cool. We're also working on actually integrating most of what is currently in OnePlay into Wombat. So we we have a lot of things going on. So um, I don't know. Yeah, so what, so, what so a couple of questions. That there, there's one in the comments that I'm kind of looking at, and it kind of concerns that last point that you had. If I import an anchor private key into Wombat, how does this differ versus simply setting up a new Wombat account? And I'm kind of curious because once you integrate these other kind of chains into Wombat Wallet, it'll be the same process, right? <laughs> um, yes, you can. You can still create uh, a new account or address on. Um, on EVM or on Ethereum um, there. And with, with the Anchor support um, or with the EOS WAX support here, um, it's basically, yes, if you import your private key, then you will be able to use the same account that you have on, on Anchor within Wombat as well. That's the main That's difference, right? If you create a new one, you'll have a new one. That's a good thing, it, but it, uh, it may also be annoying. Um, so depending on what you want, right? If you want to dis to distinct accounts, um, then you should go for a new one. Um, we'll be paying for it. Don't worry, <laughs> right? Um, but if you import your your account, that's also totally fine. Um, it's just um, depending on how you've set up your account, you're probably asking about Wax, right? Um, you um, 
yeah, you will still have have to create a, an, an EOS account if you want to e use EOS or whatever. Right? But apart from that, it works the same. From our perspective, it works the same. You can also use, if you import it, you can also use the backup uh, solution that we provide using your Dropbox or G Drive. Right? You can still get your key backed up um, even if you import it. So yeah, it's 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 actually the same, pretty much the same thing. And with these other chain integrations, it's going to be the same. You you guys are going to create accounts, and you'll be able to import them. Is that yes? The idea? Um, right now, we still don't have mul multiple accounts because it's like that. This is really hard for us um, because we have so much support for this one account that you have. Um, so if you have your key on Ethereum, that that key will also be used across all other EVM chains. It's pretty much the same as as if you're if you create a a key or an address in MetaMask, right? Then you can basically just switch the chain. Yep. And um, yeah, so very and, similar and to how you port over from Ethereum to Polygon if you're doing NFTs or something like that within the MetaMask. Exactly. You, and and <laughs> because because we decided to do it like that, originally we were thinking like, okay, let's create a new key for Polygon or for BNB chain, right? Um, but then we realized, okay, some applications actually rely on the fact that you also have access to um, your uh, your address on on Polygon, right? Just like um, Mega Cryptopolis were just uh, migrating their NFTs um, to Polygon, so now you're supposed to to have the same key on Polygon, right? Because you've you've received uh, Polygon based NFTs from them, um, and because of these things, we actually said, okay, no, you will have the same key across all EVM chains, right? The same public address, the same private key. Um, so that you, it, it's it's fully interoperable. We're still working on having multiple accounts there as well. It's obviously going to be, become more and more important. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's uh, kind of it works the same way. If you if you import your key, then you'll be able to use the key across all AV, EVM chains, right? And, and if you create it, um, or if you let Wombat create it for you, you'll also be able to use it across all EVM chains. So this is uh, this right now. Uh, Wombat supports uh, EOS, Telos, and, and Wax and Ethereum, right? EOS, Telos, Wax, Ethereum, and Polygon. Yeah. Okay, Polygon I didn't Ethereum. I didn't realize about the Polygon thing. So so is the is the Telos EVM supported? Or Not yet. Uh, we, yeah, that's 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 a good question because I was talking to the uh, Telos Foundation. Um, shout out to Justin uh, last week about this. Um, it's it's for us. It's a bit hard um, because we would ha somehow have to make sure, um, based on our kind of own ambition, basically, that people can distinguish Telos from Telos EVM, right, and that they kind of understand how to migrate things like maybe Telos tokens from Telos. To, from Telos native to Telos EVM and back, right? And how these two accounts are are associated, and that's not easy. There's a few quirks in there that make it really hard. <laughs> so Justin and I basically decided that, huh? Okay, we need to think about that more before we mm -hmm. kind of just implement it, uh, uh, access for Telos EVM, because what we don't want is that people somehow lose money because right. they assume. Um, somehow they have Telos tokens on uh, Telos native, and then they want to migrate them, and somehow they disappear or whatever um, because they they got it wrong, right? So it's it's not as simple as just integrating with Telos EVM and just leaving it to people because we really don't want specifically people who already have Telos on Telos native. We don't want them to kind of get confused and uh, and lose money on the way. So the important distinction is uh, all of the EVM chains will be mapped to one Ethereum address, and that won't account for anything that is already in the wallet itself, um, really, right? Yeah. OK. So um, and then I think I know the answer, but I let the expert answer it anyway. Uh, Orion Wax, uh, how does this reflect in our username? Wombat is native EOS 12 characters length username. I think you might have that wrong, but yeah, go ahead, Aiden. <laughs> Um, so if you import your private key, you will get the same username that you have on Anchor, right? Um, typically, that's one username, right? You don't reuse your um, your uh, private key across multiple accounts, so you should be getting your Wax account name. Um, if you create a new one, then you can choose a new one that's not used yet, right? It doesn't have to be the same as on EOS. Um, mine isn't the same on EOS and Wax. Um, so you can you can just use uh, or choose another 12 character uh, wax account name if you create a new account on wax. 
but the, the rules are the same because it's the same software, uh, pretty much, right? It's both EOS IO. So um, we don't, we currently don't have um, a namespace on on Wax, so we're not we're not utilizing namespaces there. Yet. I have a uh, question, <laughs> actually, and this is a really I, that's I, heaven. I, this is <laughs> like this is one thing that's been really annoying me about Wombat. There is things that annoy you, Jimmy. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, and I don't know how to fix it, so maybe you can help me. Because it only happens with Wombat and Pomelo. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Every time I go to Pomelo, my Wombat, you know, pop-up opens and asks me to sign in on Pomelo. It doesn't happen on any other sites, but for some reason on Pomelo.io, when I go there, the Wombat, you know, uh, Chrome plugin pops up and it says, enter your Wombat password. And I mean, that's not what I want to use Pomelo with. And I don't know why. And I don't know how to fix it. So I always have to go onto a different browser, whatever I use from Hello, so that I can log in with my Anchor account because the, the account that I use on Pomelo isn't isn't the free one that I created on, on Wombat. Um, any ideas or or, or or anything? I'm just trying I'm just trying it. So you go to pomelo.io and the, on the main page you're getting asked to log in with Wombat. Yeah, it always pops up. It's really bizarre and I don't know how to fix it. And it's like a, a glitch in my system or something. Really it doesn't happen to me. I've never seen that. <laughs> uh, no, so, um, yeah, I, I could show you actually. So, oh no, so like it opens, it doesn't pop up. It opens a new window that like just says, you know, enter your passphrase to unlock uh, Wombat. Um, I can go back to Pomelo um, and I can click the sign in button and then it will bring up the. Um, okay, we can. Um, I think I have an idea. Um, we can take that offline um, because it's gonna it's gonna take a while. It's probably going to do no, no. I like it. It's, I'm it's not complaining. I was just curious on why it happens there and nowhere else, and I couldn't figure yeah, it out. Um, because it probably asks you for an account that you don't have set up with Wombat, and Wombat will basically just try to create that account for you, that, which is why a new tab <laughs> opens, right? Um, really and this process is not, huh? Okay, I'm I'm having a call with our main dev of the Chrome extension after, uh, <laughs> in, in like two hours, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll check with him. Yeah, I, it, it doesn't happen anywhere else. It's just that one, and it's so bizarre for me because it's. I will I will need your your username to check on your accounts though um, before, um, yeah, before actually going to him. But you can you can DM that to me, and I'll I'll, I'll find it out for you. Yeah, I mean, I usually almost always use. Uh, Wombat. When I use it, I use it on on the mobile, right? I, I don't. You, I have the extension there, but I don't use it very. Ah, so apparently Chrome does this with a few wallets. So Ryan Wax says, okay, I maybe that's. Um, but yeah, I I I, I like the mobile app for Wombat. I think for me, that's that's the clutch. Now you you might you might add something. I don't know how much you're allowed to talk about that, but you said that in the DM. It might be coming later than sooner, but you guys are potentially planning on maybe expanding from the browser and the from the browser browser plugin and and the mobile. Uh, yeah, we're currently exploring that. Um, if we can run kind of a desktop app um, for Wombat, right? Um, so here's the thing: in general, um, we're we're fine with the wallet. Right, the wallet is great, um, but the wallet is just a tool that you want to use whenever you use something that's worth using. Right, so if you want to use Pomelo, you need a wallet. Right, but um, we want to like we're generally expanding beyond that, and we've been building, you know, we've been building OnePlay, we're building Dungeon Master, and that's all going great. But um, now we have so many things out there that we want to actually condense that into one product so that it's easier to use. So now, now we're actually working. On putting more of what is currently in OnePlay into the Wombat app, so that people can can use it without actually opening a, a separate website, right? Um, that has a different name and a different logo, right? And and these kinds of things. So all the functionality that's currently in OnePlay should be accessible from Wombat. And um, when you do that, you need more than just a Chrome extension. If you if we want that on desktop as well, then it's not going to work well in the Chrome extension because it's always going to open. A separate website, right? Or there's only so so little that you can do in this little pop-up window. So um, that's actually pretty bad. So we're currently exploring if we if we can actually and how we can build a well downloadable um, 
web desktop client for Wombat um, for cool. for all chains, where where you have all the functionality in the desktop app as well that you that you will have in the mobile apps, right? Because, so this um, won't necessarily be like a competitor to Anchor. It'll actually be something completely different. It'll kind of be like almost like a melding between a wallet and 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 a workstation or a wallet and a game station type of type of idea. <sighs> yeah, exactly. So um, in general, we're like, like we, we've always been heavily game focused, right? We have the wallet, but the wallet is is also game focused, right? There's always been games in there. And um, in general, we've been working with so many um, traditional games, Web2 games that um, uh, we, we where we've been adding NFTs and this whole crypto layer on top, right? And in a way, this turns these games into a light form of Web3 games, right? But for us, it's still about kind of the fun component of games. And we want people to play the games primarily because they're fun, because they can be making a ton of money with them, right? It's always difficult. If you if you make a game that pays well and people play that game because, because they want to make money, right? Then if the game doesn't pay anymore, and there's an, an, another game that pays better, then everybody will, will move over to that game, and just play that game. No matter if it's fun, it just pays better, right? And, and I think that with, with Uplift, for instance, you also have that effect that people just want to build cool stuff, right? Yeah. That's why people are in the Uplift. Um, it's, it's not that they can be making $3,000 a month, right? Um, maybe some people can, but it's not the majority of people who actually play these games, right? However, on these play-to-earn games, you see that the economies actually pump very quickly, and then they they actually break down fairly quickly as well. Um, yep. in, in most cases, simply because it's not sustainable, right? You, you can't have all people actually make a net positive on a game, um, with the expectation that anyone comes in, right, and has a positive ROI. That's just not possible, right? These yeah, games, are- it's just. It goes through the same hype cycles as as like cryptos in ICO phases. Yeah, right? you, have the, you have the honeymoon phase, and that just it, it is a self reinforcing, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, trend until it's not, and then you know exactly. It's just, and then the, right? and the you know the problem it flips, the, and then that's the self reinforcing trend. The problem that I the main problem that I have with that is that um, right now there is no incentive for game makers for play to earn game makers to actually keep building their game that people have spent a ton of time and money on, right? But rather shut it down or just let it go and build the next thing. There's a, a lot of incentives to do that. And I don't I don't yep. even blame them for doing that. I'm just saying that there's just a ton of incentives. You'd rather, rather than fixing your economy, you'd rather build a new game, right? And yeah, um, I, honestly, yeah. I've seen people on Twitter asking for people to just go make something else. I'm like, guys, and I, and I get yeah. it. Like, I mean, Uplift, we can never do that because like our history is encoded in this place and that's not the fucking point. Uh, but yeah, I mean, at, well, and I mean, you know, our, the weekend could have done that too. And instead, they, you know, are revamping, uh, uh, you know, um, our planet. And I mean, that's it's challenging. It's way fucking harder. But then at the end of the day, you will have built something of substance, right? Like just building Flash in a pan on top of Flash in a pan on top of Flash in a pan is probably the best way to make money, right? Yeah, like right now, it is. right? But it's also lame as fuck. Yeah, they're they're not as as TC is putting it. They're not real games, right? That's right. Um, basically yield farms with a game UI or a gamified UI, right? right. Um, and that's the problem with yield farms. They're great, right? But they're just very very hard to sustain. And I think you know what, yep. what I'm what I'm talking about, right? Can um, confirm. <laughs> well, and, and it's a very like angel investor way to look at the whole space too, right? Like if you're just coming in and building a game and then draining off the profits and then going and building something else and then going and building something else and then going and building something else, right? You're just driving forth a profit making machine. You're not out there helping the ecosystem evolve, right? Like, and and it's good for the guys for the, for the players who are in very very early, right? And so obviously they will ask that for uh, on Twitter. Right, because those were the people who made a nice net positive on the game in the last game, right? So they want to be very early in the next game and hype it up again, right? And yeah. like I said, there's no there's no actual problem with that. Um, if if people want to participate in that, fine, right? Um, it's just that this is not going to be sustainable, and this like this kind of model will um, will run dry at some point. It ha- it has to, right? Because yep. pe- most people will not have any money. <laughs> left to spend on these games when they come in or they will have heard of play to earn games that they're actually not play to earn but they're actually play to lose or whatever right or play to net 
R, uh, net negative ROI or something like that. Um, and it, so like we're more about the play and earn part, right? If you want to call it right. like that or if it's... Yeah, that's that's um, probably a better description for sure. Then you want to actually yeah. make something, again, with, with substance. And it has to have sort of real economy. It can't just be, you know, like the, the, the click-through arcs. I mean, they're clearly powerful if you, you know, manage them the right way. Um, but yeah, it's gotta, it's gotta mean something, right? That's like when, when we start allowing people to, uh, withdraw, um, uh, you know, NFTs from the, you know, uh, the survival world economic zones as an example, right? Like they're probably going to end up getting tokenized. That's, you know, we can do all sorts of crazy blend shit. Other projects are going to be able to do blend shit, but at the end of the day, you're going to be able to melt those things back into the game and build something with it. Right, like it's like an actual. There's an actual point to it. It's actual resources that you know can be used in in constructing the metaverse, uh, which I think is going to be kind of interesting. Anyway, yeah. And I think I think that a lot, a lot of the parts that are in these games um, already, they're a lot of fun, right? Blending is a lot of fun. I I love it, right? Uh, Me too. Having like being able to blend four of these things into that thing and then use that and three other ingredients and do that, right? I've always loved that, even in, in like good old RPG on PC, right? <laughs> um, back in like 98 or whatever. Right? Like these way, <laughs> yeah, 98. Man, that seems so long ago now, but it, it also is, not. Right? Jesus, I'm old. But did I, did I tell you the story that um, when I was studying like, I'm old, right? Like not super old, but I'm. Uh, I was born in the '80s, so I, I started studying Jesus, at the university. You're younger than me, dude. Like me too. Come on. <laughs> you're just a pup. Okay, so I just feel old <laughs> now, now that I'm sitting with you. It's actually great. <laughs> it gives me this good feeling of it's not over yet. <laughs> um, so in 2003, I started studying, and I was sharing flats with a friend, right? And we we're playing Diablo 2, probably most remember. Um, and we we're also playing a racing game that was called Have a Nice Day 2. Most people don't remember that because I, I, I think that was mostly, a, I think it was German German studio making that. So it was only a thing in Germany. But the cool thing about that game was that you could upgrade your, your car. You could um, you could buy a better engine for credits, right? Buy better tires, gearboxes, whatever. Uh, at least that's what I remember. And um, uh, the friend that I was sharing flats with and I were like playing both of these games and we're like, hey, it's so cool. Look, we're, we're like level 60 in Diablo or whatever, right? So it's it's easy to grind for for uh, for uh, gold. How cool would it be if we just could use that gold and spend it in Nice 2 to buy a better engine for a car, right? How cool would that be? And that was back in 2003, right? And we're like, considering how cool would it be to have a platform where all of these games are somewhat interoperable, at least on this kind of economical level, so you could just use the assets that you get from one game and flip it into something that you can use in another game. And then we realized how difficult it would be to create games that are on par with Diablo 2 and Nice 2 and whatever, right, um, that would be worth playing, actually, for fun, and you would have this additional aspect of actually like earning in there rather than just making them so that you could earn, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so this would be a super hard if you just want to build kind of this platform of interoperable games that are still kind of a closed ecosystem, right? Um, and so we kind of, uh, we dismissed the idea, but it was always kind of this, this, this dream. And then blockchain came around like some, I don't know, 10, 10 15 years later, right? Mm -hmm. And um, like really. And uh, suddenly I realized, hey, this is actually not entirely stupid, right? And you could even do it in kind of an open ecosystem because you can basically just earn tokens or NFTs. You can flip those in one game. Then you can swap that into something else that's a different game token or buy NFTs in a different game and yep. play with those, right? And yeah, that's actually pretty awesome. And this is, this is uh, yeah, it's, it, it's still supposed to be about the fun part of games, right? But you can use some parts and reuse them somewhere else. And I think this is, this is where we need to go with the entire space. This is where we will go with the entire space. Even like X Infinity are saying this is the year of the gameplay. So they mm -hmm. realize that they need more gameplay. They need more fun parts, right? And uh, you can't just have people play the game um, years and years and end without without actually having fun. Um, I mean, some people will do that because it's uh, it means a living for them, right? And that's also totally fine. Um, yep. But for people like uh, for people in most people in the U.S., right? If they can make $300 a month by playing a play-to-earn game, that is obviously a lot of money, 
but it's not they can't make a living so it's not yeah, life it's not life changing or you go to the yeah. philippines and that's like the definition of life changing or other exactly. places right yeah. so you'd rather and, and like traditional gamers in most of the games that i know at least they do the exact opposite they don't want to make a living or make money with the games they actually spend money on the games and they're right. totally fine right you're yeah. totally fine spending 100 bucks to go to an nba game whatever Right, you're totally fine spending twenty bucks on a movie ticket. Uh, you're totally like you. You exchange money for entertainment, for escapism, for all kinds of things all the time. And um, why, like you, you also want that in games. You you do want that in games. It's totally fine, right? Um, so most people, um, if um, if they're if they're playing games, they actually are willing to spend money because it's a it's a hobby for them, and it's it's great. Um, so as, so long as it's fun. So long as they get as they get something non monetary out of it, right? Right, right, right. For sure. All right. Well, Adrian, um, what are you grateful for? Uh, I'm just grateful for being here, actually, now and today. I like it. Hey, me. <laughs> Uh, Northern Woods Vampire, that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just reading it as well. That's awesome. Uh, I'm grateful for the value the uplift has for people. We were chatting about this a little bit before the stream, and I've been getting that ton of messages recently private messages about people telling me um what the uplift means to them and, and why it's important to them and it's really um, amazing to to hear that we're actually making that difference and it's... right <clears throat> i'm just getting a screenshot i haven't done that in a while all right well what, do you, what about you Corey? what are you great for Oh, um, I'm grateful for Adrian and Wombat, um, and I'm also grateful for this moment of opportunity. There's just lots that is hopefully going to get entirely squared away this week, and then um, we can actually put the pedal to the metal and start kicking some ass with any luck. So, yeah. Does that fit on <laughs> on the tile? <laughs> yeah. No, the actual thing is I'm grateful for this moment of opportunity. Yeah, yeah, uh, Ryan, I got yours, but I had to skip all the names and just said, you know, people that are standing at the legacy media, and of course, TC, I got yours as well. Uh, that's good. Yep. So, what's new with uh, Dungeon Master season two? What's new from from season one? <clears throat> um, yeah, we we kind of have the uh, the ambition to do one big new thing, and in each season, right? Um, so because it's it's only a handful of people working on that who are doing an awesome job, but um, it's also like there's also a limited amount of stuff that we can that we can um, actually build. Um, so we're doing uh, material harvesting. Um, so with your dungeon runs, you will be getting materials, and imagine what wombats digging in, in uh, into Amer uh, Australian soil, what they might find down there, right? What's uh, what's in there? That's Maybe coal, maybe iron, maybe uranium that you will be able to find. Um, and um, ah, hi Sasha. <laughs> um, and uh, so you, you'll be able to find these three materials depending on which NFTs you've got staked um, in in the game, and then you can basically craft items from these. And these items are wombatiums, and these wombatiums you can then use to upgrade your items. Um, so uh, basically, you will be able to blend from um, from across rarities. For instance, you'll be able to blend um, level five uh, common items into rare items and, and things like that. Right. So there's this so kind that, of system so, of of materials and crafting and. So the game goes live on Wednesday, right? Yeah, so we just uh, the season one just ended yesterday. So we have this one week break between seasons, and the next season is launching Wednesday next week. Yeah. 
And you guys are, you said you're doing a pack drop in, in, in the interim. Now, is this pack drop uh, contain those cards, the, those NFTs that you were talking about that, that um, will... Maybe. Um, <laughs> there, there's a chance of, um, of sometimes catching one. Um, but also we have two, two new types of items, um, which is uh, goggles and amulets. Um, so you'll be able to get those um, and um, yeah, find them, uh, get them in, in the packs for uh, in the season two packs, basically. Um, and there, some of the items um, will obviously give you a boost for your harvesting, for your material harvesting. Um, so yes, um, there will be new items in the packs in the drop on Monday. And when did that pack one sell? Oh, sorry, um, on Monday. Okay, sure. Sorry. Um, Monday. Um, so it's I don't know what that Eastern is. Um, Monday, eleven a.m. Yeah, that should be eleven a.m. Eastern. Is uh, the community drop starts and then one thirty p.m. Eastern, the um, the public drop. Four four p.m. Central Eastern Time, six thirty. Yeah, I think it's there's there's a five hours difference right now, right? Public pack drop. So. Cool. And and yeah, and then you know once you have those items, you can craft them in the game after the game goes live, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's that's the main thing that we're doing. There's going to be a few other things um, that we will launch throughout the season. Um, which I'm not sure whether Zasha feels comfortable if I disclosed <laughs> them already. Um, but um, there's a few more things. And then we're obviously building out the roadmap ahead because um, there are so many people, um, uh, so many people who, who actually like, like the game and have been playing. So we've had uh, about 10,000 uh, daily actives on the game uh, in season one, right? That's huge. Obviously, we're super proud of that. Um, we made it into the top 20 on Dapp Raider in terms of all blockchain games, um, right? That's, um, that's, that's super awesome. And um, yeah, so this gives us a lot of confidence and like uh, building more stuff and, and like, keeping, it, keeping it sustainable, right? We don't want to kind of, as I said earlier, we don't want to inflate it so that it's super big today. And then tomorrow there's nothing, right? We want to do another hundred seasons of, of Dungeon Master going yep. forward, right? Not not just stop after five because it, it's become unsustainable for us, right? That's why we're being sometimes we're being slower than other teams uh, with that. We're basically being more more sustainable on that end. Indeed. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's really important to. Um, yeah, I think it's really important to you know build on on something that you that you had right like the, give it the test case let it see how it pans out and then add the features that people want right like too many projects um don't listen to the community a or don't like reflect on what could have been better uh b or sometimes just wait way too long <laughs> to release something because they want it to be perfect and it either never gets released or by the time it does it, it's kind of irrelevant so yeah, that's what's cool about forcing ourselves to release something new every season, right? Seasons are uh, six weeks long, right? So we have to we have to focus on actually delivering something. Um, <clears throat> so um, on, that's on one hand, right? There, there's got to be something. On the other hand, it can't be too big. So we can we actually need to keep things super small if we want to well be able to to build them in six weeks, right? We know some certain things we've already started doing earlier, right? But uh, some things like uh, people are requesting, um, I don't know, uh, names for the wombats, or they're uh, requesting that wombats be NFTs themselves, right? And these things are so big that you can't just do them. Uh, there's, that's not a two-week project for us, right? Um, so we need to plan ahead and kind of build things upon things. And um, that's actually very interesting. And uh, having this kind of long-term vision in mind, and we have so many ideas of what uh, Dungeon Master will and can become, um, that uh, it's actually totally fine just doing one thing at a time, one thing every season. Sometimes it might be two smaller things or so, but um, typically it's one bigger thing. And um, yeah, that, that, will, that will just pro propel us forward together with, with the community. And yes, it's exactly what happens, right? People 
obviously have a ton of ideas. Sometimes they match very well with what we what we had in mind. Sometimes there are totally different things, which right now a lot of people have been request the, re requesting. Yeah, like I said, names and if more NFTs. Some people were asking for season passes. Some people were asking for plants. Some people were asking for multiple dungeons and things like that. Right. So. Um, it's awesome to, uh, to to have these things. And some of these blocks were already on our roadmap and now we can shift them so that it's it's actually the most interesting, intriguing thing for, for anyone who's playing that. And um, yeah, we're very much looking forward to all of the feedback with crafting and, and materials in next season and then see what we can build on top of that, right? Because once we have materials, there's obviously a ton of more things that you, that you can make out of, off of these materials um, than just uh, wombations that you can cr uh, craft, right? So that's, yeah, I really like to have all of these components where it can pull pull out one thing and then it, see how we can combine that with another thing, right? And um, it's just a lot of fun. And, and Sasha and I are having a lot of fun discussing these things and, um, yeah, figuring yeah. out what, what, the, what the coolest fun thing is that we can actually create within... Within, within six weeks. Season. Man, within like MVP weeks. after MVP after MVP, that yeah. just... I, I absolutely love that. And Sasha, of course, next time you're more than welcome to to, uh, to come on and, and join us. That'd be good. And uh, I, I don't know who the real Mr. Roboto is, but he knows Jimmy and thinks I'm adorable. So welcome. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Use Wombat Prime to drop NFTs. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I just <laughs> even like listening to you. It's so good. It's so good. You know, I, right? I just sent... I just sent uh, Sasha a, a, a list of things that we could do for Wombat Prime subscribers um this week <laughs> earlier this week so we're working on on stuff like that yes that's um awesome. there will be something tied to being wombat prime that's cool i've been wombat prime for i, mean, I think since you told me it existed um so that's it's, that's kind of that's kind of fun it, i realized that it's actually so much cheaper to just spend one euro one euro one dollar a month on one bit prime to get those 100 transactions per day right yeah. then actually staking anything 100%. We're, we're we're losing so much money on that actually. yeah that's not great i mean and and i mean well and this is the thing too like if you add you definitely want to make that up but like you know adding value by you know if wombat prime if i knew i was getting an nft you know every month or whatever right some kind of nft like fuck yeah let's rock and roll yeah yeah it's um it's actually crazy because um I would I would actually like to do different tiers. I just don't know how if that's going to be supported by, um, by by like Google Play Store and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that you could also get um, more NFTs or more benefits because we actually I would hate making it more expensive than than just one one dollar, right? Um, but at the same time, if if we we had to like mint. Uh, 100 NFTs per month per user, whatever, right? Then um, we'll, we'll be losing even more money on that subscription. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll figure it out. It's gonna be fine, right? Well, we're we're also thinking about having kind of subscription subscription NFTs um, that you could could have for 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 Prime as well. That's so cool. um, these kinds of things, um, a lot of a lot of ideas. Not not enough time. I mean, yeah. I think I personally like that that idea right like you could buy a one month or a three month or a six month subscription nft like i could i could get that for Corey for christmas and like he could have six months of like wombat prime for free like like it's kind of <laughs> the next evolution to you know uh kfc gift certificates i guess right like i mean what would you rather have six months prime or one bucket of kfc Corey? uh yeah uh prime for sure See? Right. <laughs> and, and not the case he's bad because it's not i mean it's terrible but... <laughs> wombat prime platinum yeah there we go i like it i like it um there was uh, another oh please fix issues for people with what's wcw and wombat wax cloud, wax wallet. cloud wallet ah ah yeah i think i uh, in dungeon master right um I think that is uh, something that we're on. Um, and yeah, I've got permission from uh, from from Sasha to disclose the NFT thing. So in in cool. season two, we, it's not going to be there by the beginning of season two. 
Um, but the first thing that we want to add once we launch season two is going to be guest NFT rewards. So you will have a chance of dropping um, NFTs that we got as kind of donations from all kinds of other NFT projects that we'll be distributing across um, across our users so that you can find more interesting stuff in the dungeons, right? Um, and we've had we've actually had so many people who want to gift NFTs and we need a way just to distribute them. Mm -hmm. um, so every every dungeon run, I believe it's based on a dungeon run, or no, it's probably based on your daily rewards, um, will uh, we'll give you a chance of, of dropping NFTs that are kind of, yeah, ra random NFTs that are partner uh, NFT collections. That's, and some of them yeah, will actually be will be like exclusives, right? So yeah. there are people making kind of um, wombat collabs and, and things. And that's um, something we need to do that for our uh, uh, uplift reward seasons, Jimmy. I was, I was thinking about that, like doing doing some uh, collabs or special things or whatever. Uh, the the uh, this season that that just started, um, uh, Blue Dak threw in some uh, some tokens. We actually move. We're moving to the new system where. We're actually not going to touch the uh, the principle of our uh, wax count anymore. We're just going to have the the uh, um, staking bonus uh, go out. So there's going to be less uh, wax rewards, same uplifting rewards. Uh, but I think bringing in some uh, uh, some partner projects to uh, to do collabs and drop NFTs as well uh, randomly to you know whatever top percentage of uh, of players uh, can can get them could be uh, could be really fun. Yeah, and especially when we start parting over to other blockchains as well, like it's going to be really interesting to see what communities can contribute and donate and throw into the mix, right? And it's, I, you, like you said, NFTs for a top yep. portion that oh, are coming and, from a variety of projects. Like, right? why not? It, the, it's filled with I communities is, anyway, right? <laughs> right. And I think this, this is stuff that just developed. I think we're going to start doing uh, uh, land charts as well. Cause I think we're going to have some... Uh, uh, some land giveaways in uh, uh, in Thune, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, this idea is still developing. Uh, but yeah, Tuttle started talking about doing like land shard NFTs. We have to like collect ten of them and basically blend that together and get a piece. Of oh, that's so like cool. That. That's so cool, right? These, these right, kind of and then yeah, we'll can... we'll release those out as rewards. I think it'll just be. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, blending. Um... And that's that's uh, bl bl blending, right? Uh, it's it's such a great thing. We're we're also working on a. On a solution for blending where we can also blend attributes um right so if you have fungible uh, so i keep saying fungible attributes why, why it's mutable attributes um if you have immutable or also immutable attributes um if you blend them right uh blend these nfts you want the uh, the blend to have uh, attributes based upon the attributes of the input uh, nfts right uh, we're currently working on something like that, um, where if your uh, input NFT has a power of 500, your output NFT will have whatever, right? Maybe a power of 1,000. If your input NFT has a power of 100, it, the output NFT will only have a power of 200, right? Um, and there's a lot of cool things that you can do with that. Um, it's just su <laughs> like super hard to build. Um, but uh, this will be in our blending system as well, so there's so many things that we work on in parallel, right? As you can see, um, that um, yeah, it's actually it's actually fascinating what you can do with the blockchain. And as you said, right, there's there, there might be multiple blockchains, right? Right now, as I said earlier, we're integrating um, BNB chain, Avalanche, and, and, and the likes um, into Wombat. Why not have stakeable NFT collections uh, from Polygon or BNB chain in Dungeon Master? Right, that's obviously going to happen. Um, right. And then if you have that, you can you can also send out NFTs on top of another blockchain. And and yeah, it's it's uh, it's always going to be hard to kind of contain the complexity for users and how can how they can register like all their 100 different blockchain accounts, <laughs> right? And um, it's already a hassle with um, with Wax and EOS right now. Um, but um, yeah, it's. Um, it, it, that it, it basically gives you unlimited possibilties. It's crazy. Yeah, but it, yeah. when still you guys are like some of the only people that are really doing it, and that's kind of what mainstream adoption needs, right? Like, if I, like I've even on my on my smartphone, I've got like ten different accounts that I barely use because I don't necessarily trust the mobile stuff. But like, it's different accounts, different passwords, different everything, right? Like, there's 
no integration that, that, that puts them all together, right? It's like I go to one shop down the street and I'm using, you know, Australian dollars. I go to the next shop down the street and I'm using American dollars. And I go to the next shop down the street and I'm, I'm using, you know, Mexican pesos. And it's like, there's no exchange in the middle. I've got to get out a different wallet and use a different thing. And this is a real pain in the ass, right? And so if we want mainstream adoption, you know, I think it's going to be projects like yours that are forerunners in the making of this and, 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 and trying to tackle those hurdles that you guys are having doing it. So, yeah, thanks for all the effort that you guys are putting into the system, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, really. <clears throat> yeah, uh, th thanks a lot. I mean, we're obviously not the only ones and we're building upon a ton of things that other people have built. Right. Um, so um, our blend uh, system is based on smart contracts from US Nation and, and stuff. Right. So we're. Um, we're not doing like fortunately we don't have to do all of that ourselves but it's still quite can quite a lot of stuff and um yeah it's i think it's it's super exciting and also i think that this is what what needs to happen for the space to actually thrive kind of in a long term and on a mass scale right um right now what happens is that um all kinds of companies are building kind of their own blockchain gaming platforms that are closed uh, ecosystems essentially right that use their own blockchain, whatever. Um, and how do you get out of that, right? It's, it's exactly what you said, Jimmy. It's like, uh, yeah, you're you're talking one language there, or you're having one, um, one you're using one um, uh, one currency there, and then you have to go elsewhere, and then you have to set up all, all your accounts again, right? And yeah. um, how do you see which NFTs you have on in one platform and then in another? It's, so we're actually back to yeah, you have Steam and then you have God Galaxy and you have Epic Store or whatever. Um, and um, you, how, how, do you, how do you compare your progress in a game that you've downloaded on Steam and somebody else downloaded on Epic? Um, how do you compare yourselves? You don't, right? It's the, like, just just no way. Um, like doing that across games, across ecosystems. Right? So that, that's why, why we also want to be, we want to keep building open stuff, right? So that... You can always take your private key and go elsewhere. You can always trade on a different marketplace. You can always mm -hmm. play in a different game, whatever. It's all fine, right? We just want to be the place where it all gets together. Yeah, be the be the central uh, the central node. That's interesting too. We've been talking about like as you know, the huge focus for us you know, after we get this uh, uh, this this purchase done and and you know, kind of get back on our feet a little bit is going multi chain this year, right? Like we're not, um, you know. We're gonna have a, a, a the odds and ends sale that we're gonna do, you know, with any luck in in about uh, uh, ten days. Um, you know, we've got you know land, rail, you know, uh, 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 all those kind of entities that you know <clears throat> are interspersed throughout all the worlds that we already have on Wax. We're not gonna start any new worlds on Wax. Um, you know, maybe for a long time, definitely not this year, right? We've got all the odds and ends and gratitude and 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 a bunch on Thune. We got Rail and Borvalis and Swine blah, blah blah right. Like all the stuff that people have been like, hey, I want to buy this land next to me. <clears throat> you know, we've all the stuff that basically is in our wallet still from uh, from all the stuff that we've done already. So we'll do that. So our main focus is to go multi-chain and target people from other chains about you know being that central node where all the tribes come and they ha they can have a visceral experience of being in the same place, right? You'll be able to walk through a door right from EOS to Wax bunch of EOS projects, bunch of WAX projects, or a bunch of Ethereum projects, or a bunch of, uh, you know, Binance chain projects, yada, 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 all of them, right? Like we want every, everywhere where we can talk to, you know, 50 really good projects and have them on the show. Like that's where, that's where we want to boot up, you know, a, 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 a map and give them a home, right? Give them a place to start, you know, building up their community and, and, and we'll have those NFTs on those chains and we'll be there as well. But from a player experience, from an in metaverse experience, you'll just be walking from one, you know, uh, uh, world to another through a portal, right? And so we're kind of really looking forward to the, uh, that connectivity thing. And I feel like that's what Wombat is doing just at a, like an infrastructure level, right? You're, able to experience all of the amazing things in this new you know, ecosystem that we're doing but you know it's just all in one app yeah and, and you should be able to like easily trade your nfts right let's let's just give, give an example so you shouldn't have to know that if you want to sell or buy uh, a wax based nft you need to go to atomic or to nft blocks right and, and even choose um, and then if you want to trade a polygon based NFT, you have to go to OpenSea or wherever, right? And these kinds of things, you shouldn't have to know that, right? If in the kind of real world, you want to sell something, you could just go to eBay, 
whatever. I don't know where I go nowadays. <laughs> back in back in my back in my days, it was eBay, right? Um, and um, it, it it should be very easy, right? It should be like it should be the same place, the same way of doing things um, across all games across all chains it should there should it should be the same way of looking at your nfts uh, uh, like of presenting your nfts of showing them off to your friends right because that's what's cool about nfts right about gaming nfts specifically they always represent something that you achieved in the game right um so you i don't know you found you dropped this awesome crossbow in an rpg right that's yours and everybody can see that it's yours and it's awesome and it's like mega rare um, and only 10 people have that, right? So that's a real achievement. But now everybody can see that outside of the RPG. They don't have to, you don't have to log in and run around with it. Others right. don't have to log in and, and, and look at your avatar. They can just look at your blockchain account, right? But then that should be possible across all chains and across all games that run on all these chains, right? And where do you get that? You don't get that at the moment. It's Sorry, it, 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 it's interesting because like when you were explaining about yeah. yeah, when you were explaining about that, what I was kind of thinking about was like, you know, I guess some people they, they go direct to the airline you know, to buy to buy their, their airline ticket to, to book their flight. But the majority of people they go online, um, even if they go to the airline direct and, and they search on Expedia. Or, or something like that, right? And then it'll give you a top list of like, you know, all of the different, you know, airline carriers or all of the different flights in that day. And that's kind of what I envisioned when you were talking about it, right? Like you can now have this uh, network uh, core where people could go in there and they could search for something, right? And it would bring up all of the top NFTs or assets from all of these games across all of the blockchains, right? Not just one, not just... Like, don't get me wrong. I love Nefty Box. What those guys are doing is amazing. Atomic Hub yeah. as well, right? But it's all wax. There's there's nothing else there. I mean, I guess uh, Atomic has has some EOS stuff, right? Like, if you go to OpenSea, it's all, you know, Ethereum or Polygon, right? And and so, like, there's no, like you said, there's no place where you can kind of reel in all of these assets from all of these places and and even the ones that are trying to build blockchain gaming as a, as a business like ultra, for example, <laughs> which I love what they're doing, but like they're out there, you know, in, in the nether, nobody's paying attention to what they're doing. It might be good, but they're not connected to the rest of the world. Right. What I love about what you guys do actually is um, you know, you reward people for playing games that aren't even on the blockchain, uh, which yeah. is pretty cool. Right. But, <laughs> that, that, um, but that it's, it's Walmart, kind of the same, think. right. It's kind of the same thing. Um, with these games, because uh, these games just live for themselves, right? And if you play the game or if you don't, nobody knows, right? Um, but with NFTs, you can actually express that you're playing games and like even if they're traditional games, right? Um, and you could have different statuses um, within the game, right? So you, you get, if you reach level 50, you get this particular NFT or some type of NFT and it's like, it's this epic thing, right? But um, if you reach level 100, you get this one of 100 because only 100 people have reached that, right? And so you get this. And what's cool is that, you, yes, you can sell that NFT and somebody else can buy it and show it off, right? But you will always be able to track whether you actually gotten it from, from the game itself directly by yeah. playing the game or whether you bought it on a marketplace and because that's recorded on the blockchain. Well, and right. people could tap into that, like like these online, you know, sorry, these gaming communities that have like these big events, these big esports events, they could tap into that. Somebody could create a paid service where they could say, okay, here's your ranking based on what you've achieved in the in the game that's verified by your blockchain account, um, because we know that you've actually earned this in the game. You didn't just buy it off the open market, which is really interesting, right? Like once you start playing those things in, I mean, it makes competitions better. It makes all of these kind of like real world um coalitions of, of of groups of people who get together for these conferences and things like that it puts them in the same room with the same people with the same interests there's a lot of things that could potentially be exploited there so i'm just going to be quiet um <laughs> <laughs> but i think it could also be utilized in, in a very beneficial way right <clears throat> yeah and i think it's actually pretty great and that's that's also why we like the the, the main reason why we have um 
um, why we have um, these Web2 games, these traditional games on the platform, is precisely because they, they were able to prove that people actually play them for fun, right? So we want games that people are want to play for fun and not just for the money. Um, yeah. And um, I mean, why, why do you play Lords Mobile or Shadow Legends or whatever? Not because you can make money, because you can't make, can make any money in there, right? I mean, maybe theoretically, you could sell your account eventually, whatever, but you don't know that, right? It's not plannable. There is no kind of clear ROI on that. Uh, you may get banned, whatever, right? So people actually play them for fun. And first and foremost, and then eventually, maybe you can sell your account for a hundred bucks, fine, right? But mostly people play them because they're fun. And so they're actually proven winners in terms of fun, right? <laughs> so that's why it's great to have these games on the platform because um, we know that people play them for fun. And now we add this extra layer on top rather than just doing it for the money. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's absolutely insane to me that less than 1% of the world actually partakes in Bitcoin. You know what? The only thing that's more insane to me, or, or cryptocurrencies, the only thing that's more insane to me, honestly, Corey, is that like less than 1%, like probably like 0.1% um, plays Minecraft and gets rewarded for it. The rest of the people who play in Minecraft don't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like 0.01%. It's like 125 million people playing Minecraft. And I think we're like, uh, I don't know, like three to 5,000. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's that's a whole thing. Uh, Look at Bitcoin. We're the new Bitcoin. The Doppler world's coming for you, baby. Oh, we're okay, cool. Yeah, that, sure. Yeah, that's that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, as far as when you're going to be able to have a concert in the Uplift world, that would require uh, some, uh, some proximity audio, um, and we don't have that, and we're not we're not super duper close to it. I know it sort of exists out there, uh, but it's not on our early radar. If I'm not mistaken, proximity audio is in the uh, uh, the white paper that you can now go to the Uplift world and, and take a look at all the things that are on our dev radar for uh, for the next few years. Um, sadly, not uh, not soon. Uh, but one of the things, like I think, when we when we iterate to other forms of of base layer for metaverse that doesn't include Minecraft, which uh, is another thing that that you know we're going to be looking at again. Not it's not soon, uh, but that 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 would be you know when we would do it. And I think what most people are 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 doing is creating their own, right? Like they'll they'll get a a, a Zoom or an audio link or a Twitter Spaces, have people meet in uh, um, uh, you know in the world uh, and then just have, you know, audio running through a different channel, which is actually really, really easy to do, whether it's with Discord or Twitter spaces or whatever it is, right? Uh, so we're seeing a lot of people kind of organically uh, uh, um, kind of boot that experience up on their own in a really effect effective way. Um, so yeah, and TC, yeah, fire me a DM on that stuff. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll chat about it. I'm not sure about the icon thing, but we should do something along that because that, that's, that's really cool. Good talk. Uh, I think Ronnie had it. A- question too maybe adrian you, you can answer this i'm not exactly sure um if you have an eos you must be able to buy for exs candle for your wombat with eos and not have to exchange to wax first i'm not sure if this is a question or or if this is a statement i mean maybe you can um i think uh, i think maybe i if, if i read it right then um it's about a, that if you get EOS or you have EOS in your one by wallet already, if you want to buy candles or whatever other items for Dungeon Master, right now they're on wax, right? And you can just buy them with your EOS. And that's that's one of these cross-chain vulnerability things that's still such a pain, right? Even if two chains are essentially technically the same and there used to be this uh, new Dex market between EOS and wax where at least you could swap EOS for wax very easily, but apparently that wasn't really worth running or keep keep running. Um, so um, that that drives me crazy. <laughs> it drives me crazy that it's so hard to swap EOS for wax or um, whatever ETH for BNB or like these kinds of things, right? If you just want, move, want to move assets from one chain to another, um, specifically if they're not all EVM based, um, that's so hard. Why is why why are there still no easier solutions for that? And there's always like on in the cosmos world, there's a like right. You have osmosis. That's awesome, and that works. But uh, like that only works within the cosmos world, right? And um, so that's the these 
these things, I don't know, we need, we need so, many, so much better solutions for these things so that you can actually, and I think we've been talking about that like a year ago or so, that you can, under the hood, just swap EOS for WAX. You, you see the price denominated in like dollars, right? You, you pay $2 for this item, and then you just select the, the currency that you want to pay with, and everything else happens under the hood, right? That EOS is being swapped for WAX, and you don't even have to notice. Right, that would be so awesome, but that's so hard <laughs> from a technical perspective. That's so hard to do. Um, that unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna have we're gonna see anything like that within the next twelve months. Very, very unfortunately. Indeed. Sorry, I was just uh, responding to uh, to Mark wants uh, his NFT music to be able to uh, be playable on his property. I had a couple ideas about that, but yeah, there's there's. So many things, so many things, <laughs> all the things. Yeah, you can't, you can't even like. It's even hard to to put them in a place to actually keep them in mind, right? Even even just noting them down is hard <laughs> because yeah. there's so many. Hundred percent. I mean, that's like we've got we've got a firm rule. Like, if it doesn't if it doesn't make it into if the idea doesn't make it into a one pager where it's described, that idea is dead and it doesn't exist. Like, right? Like, and we just have to maintain them because we, yeah, in the uplift team chat, like we we have like monster ideas every ten minutes, um, and it really is tough. And that's why I really love the 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 seasonality like that just to create urgency around. Okay, like we're gonna release something new every six weeks. What is it? Right? Like Jimmy, like when I start yakking about this in the uh, in, uh, in, in a in a in a huddle, <laughs> it can just just remind me that I like just ruthlessly stole it from Adrian because uh, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> it's okay, a lot. No, I mean it's it's hard when you work like I'm sure you do too, but it's hard when you work with a bunch of geniuses because everyone has their own way of doing things, and it's difficult because everyone also has these great ideas so like i'm actually grateful to be working with the team that we do because um we all think differently but somehow we all get along and that's the way that the world should work i haven't sworn yet that's the way the fucking world should work really like, yeah. <laughs> all right well there you go <laughs> so, you no but seriously like it, it really is it shouldn't be this you know old world power play uh you know business dynamic that was you know constructed however knows when before adrian was born um it, it should be this uh just to bring it back and don't get don't get too cocky about being younger than us there adrian um the, <laughs> <laughs> but like it really needs to it really needs to it that this is what the future needs to be right like i i think um i won't go on that rant because uh we've all heard it way too many times but um yeah and i also i i need to get you to come uh, on uh, Pamela pitch deck or, 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 or maybe um, someone from your team in the next week or so, uh, maybe even Sasha wants to come and, and talk about the dungeon master Pamela proposal. So I don't know if you guys have actually made it live yet, but you guys have a dungeon master uh, proposal that's coming out. So um, if you're a fan of the game or, or if you're a fan of uh, everything that Wombat and Adrian and, and those guys over there with that team are doing, um, definitely go and toss in a Neos or two uh, into Pomelo. And there's a quadratic funding mechanism that will get you guys some support, uh, the money to uh, build out, um, you know, the next phase of, of this game that you guys are working on, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, so um, we're we're about to put it up. I'm not sure whether it's going to be up uh, by the end of the week or next week, but we, wanted, we want to have it up by by the time voting actually starts or, or donations actually start, um, unlike last time when we didn't didn't make it in time <clears throat> cool yeah uh, totally let's have it let's have it next week awesome game on uh, all right and uh yeah thanks for joining us um i will we're gonna let you go um i think Corey and i might have it yeah we're missing a meeting, meeting. uh so hey too much fun it, every time you guys come on and uh yeah sasha definitely come on next time we do that and you guys yeah, we'll, you know we'll... are welcome you know all the time Sasha's having a lot of fun in, in shows now. <laughs> All right. Game on. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, talk to you soon. All right. Cheers. Ciao. Choppy chop.